And it's time to mark the week and what? What a busy one it's been. Rishi launched what felt like the start of his election campaign with a charismaless speech. I'm sure he was saying all the right things, but many had just stopped listening. Despite having 14 years with nothing to do but think about the future, Labour have almost nothing to say about it. No plans for our border, no plans for our energy security, no plans for our economy either, and no principles either. Keir Starmer's gone from embracing Jeremy Corbyn to Natalie Elphick, all in the cynical pursuit of power at any price. Actually, that's true. That was the best bit. <laughs> but what was he talking about? Meanwhile, Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer launched his six pledges. So here we are. One card, six steps, in your hand, a plan to change the country. This is a message that we can take to every doorstep across the country. Every doorstep across the country. And make that argument. Decline is not inevitable. Politics can make a difference. Britain will have a better future. And you can choose it with Labour. Great. Jeremy Hunt had his say after costing out some of those pledges. Apparently, according to him, Labour's plans would leave a £38 billion hole. When it comes to Labour policies on jobs, welfare reform and tax, the difference, if they are elected, will be profound and damaging for every family in the country. We had pathetic pro-Palestine protesters who we can only assume were students, their faces hidden, camping outside Cambridge University, giving Suella Braveman the silent treatment. Hello. Just wondering if you'd like to uh, have any kind of discussion at all with Suella today? Hi, I'm Suella. I'm keen to find out your views and what you're protesting about. Nothing at all? No? Interested in why you're covering your faces. Is it a COVID or a health measure? Pretty childish, really, all of that, wasn't it? I mean, we can only assume that they, these people that are giving the silent treatment were students. The great minds that will be running this country. Seriously, grow up, people. Things didn't get any better in the studio when one of them, I didn't think she was a student, Fiona, I think it was, was invited to talk directly to Suella. Um, well, so, so you're saying your encampment has nothing to do with the events of October the 7th or Israel's uh, response to October the 7th. Is that, is that what you're saying? It's totally detached to October the 7th and Israel's response? The only thing that is detached, I would say, is actually your views and your approach to this whole situation and the whole of the Tory government. The people, the student protesters, are very attached to what is happening in Palestine and they are doing what they can in order to stop universities who provide, I think, £450 million to the Israeli state, to the Israeli military, rather than investing in their own education um, and what they should be putting money into you are the one and your government is completely out of touch with what actually the majority of people in Britain think about what's happening. The majority of people in Britain do not support what Israel is doing. Hang on a minute. I think she was saying that because money gets sent to Israel, we, the students here don't get... Oh, I don't know. I've lost it. And then feedback from actual Nigerians on Harry and Meghan's faux royal tour. Meghan's claim to be 43% Nigerian. This is the Nigerian action. Uh, so, so, let me start with you. Oh, Are with you me? proud? Proud? 43%. Nigerian new entry. Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. <laughs> I don't know if I have to be proud. If that's, if that, if, uh, no, I don't need to be proud. I Rather, it. I feel like <laughs> she's going to add to the negative list that we already have in Nigeria. <laughs> it's been a mucky old week.